Blizzard seems to be finally showing some love to us PvPers, with a new round of hotfixes aimed to shake up the solo shuffle meta. Will Retribution Paladins finally be deemed balanced after what seems like their fifth round of nerfs? And what healers knock Restoration Shamans off the top of the totem pole to take the S tier spot? We've got all this to share and so much more as we bring you an updated tier list for patch 10.0.7. But first, if you truly want to improve fast and get the rating you've always wanted, then head to skillcap.com. It's completely risk-free to try us out as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Come check us out with the link in the description below and get the rating you've always wanted. The most noticeable change after the patch was, of course, Blizzard's next attempt at trying to cure the plague of Retribution Paladins tearing through Solo Shuffle. Aimed at targeting Retribution's burst damage by nerfing Avenging Wrath damage by 5%, as well as the critical strike chance from Avenging Wrath Might, which is also being reduced by 5%. While this is, of course, a step in the right direction and will definitely help to tone down some of the burst damage during Wings, the main issue is that Avenging Wrath is just way too strong of a cooldown to have access to every single minute. But it was it wasn't just damage that got targeted, both survivability and utility have also been toned down. Coming in the form of a flat 10% nerf to Divine Protection, coupled with a 50% nerf to the stamina provided by the Talent Sanctified Plates, as well as a 30% nerf to the Instant Flash of Light provided by the Talent Light Celerity, and minor 10% nerf to the effectiveness of Blessing of Sacrifice. The nerfs to survivability will indeed end up making Retribution Paladins a little more exploitable and just more of a viable target for both casters and melee alike. But between Divine Protection, Lay on Hands, Bubble, Bop, Spell Warding, and Shield of Vengeance, they're still going to remain to be durable. Overall, these nerfs I'm sure we can agree are without a doubt very warranted, and with rets becoming more exploitable, should help distinguish the good rets from the mediocre. That being said, despite being toned down, Retribution Paladins will still remain to be top tier, just now a lot more in line with other specs. Unholy Death Knight has been in a very mediocre spot for a long time now, so a few buffs are being issued this patch aimed to increase the damage outside of cooldowns. Most notably for PvP, this comes in the form of a 10% buff to passive pet damage from Ray's Dead, and a rather big 20% increase to the damage of Scourge Strike. This will aid in just giving Unholy a little more kill pressure and finishing power outside of cooldowns like Gargoyle, Abomination Limb, and Apocalypse. But with how Unholy has been performing in Solo Shuffle, a lot of the issues it has comes rather with its ability to survive in a more melee dominated meta, rather than a lack of damage output. These buffs will be giving Unholy a slight nudge up our tier list, moving up from B to B plus tier. Having a look at the complete melee tier list, we still have Retribution and Warrior inside of our S tier despite the changes. Inside the A tier, it's again looking much more of the same. Windwalkers, however, after a recent bug fix that was reducing the damage of Blackout Kick, should also be feeling slightly stronger. Feral Druids are a spec to watch this patch, with other melee falling more in line and Demonology Warlocks remaining at the forefront of the meta. It means specs like Ferals that do inherently well into them should notice a slight rise in power. For the B plus tier, we've got Unholy after the buffs now moving up to round out the tier, alongside Demon Hunters and Assassination Rogues, who both, despite being inside B plus, can still perform tremendously well at lower ratings. The meta right now is not doing subtlety rogue players any favors, and with both Rhett and Warrior still remaining to be dominant, we'll be moving them down one tier, joining Frost Death Knight, Fury Warrior, Outlaw Rogue, and Enhancement Shaman. Enhancement Shaman could end up being another spec to watch this patch, with NA player Ask Ronnie reaching top 3 on the solo shuffle ladder. But with the lack of a healing reduction effect, Enhancement as always is just at the mercy of the lobby. For a spec that has been at the top of the range meta for multiple patches in a row, we definitely expected a little more from these Beast Mastery nerfs. A 3% overall nerf to both Hunters and Pet damage is just not enough, especially considering they got both their damage and survivability buffed last patch with the changes to both Death Chakram and Rejuvenating Winds. Beast Mastery is ubiquitous for its ease to play, and when a spec has so much easy to dish out damage, it becomes very overwhelming to deal with. And it's this consistent onslaught of damage coupled with easy to land instant crowd control that makes them a beast in solo shuffle. So for now, we'll be keeping Beast Mastery well and truly cemented inside of our S tier. Elemental Shaman is a spec that's heavily reliant on the state of the meta to perform, and with a lot of its counters being forcefully nudged out of popularity, means Elemental is starting to edge back into the limelight. 
And despite receiving no changes this patch, we're even seeing multi rank 1 elemental shaman Oz reach number 1 overall solo shuffle in North America. Opting to play a more unorthodox spec, neglecting Stormkeeper in favor of more sustained lava burst damage. This is a great adaptation, as it allows for elemental shamans to massively take advantage of the sheer amount of demonology warlocks, spreading flame shock to the multitude of pets. For now, we don't think this one outlier justifies moving elemental any higher on our tier list, but it's definitely going to be a spec to watch for the later part of this season. Also being affected by the meta, but sadly not in a positive way, are Affliction Warlocks. Affliction's biggest counter has always been healers that can effortlessly heal through high levels of sustained damage, or effortlessly counter unstable Affliction with immunities or dispels. And as it happens, Fist Weavers, who are one of the biggest counters imaginable for Affliction Warlocks, bring both in abundance, which means it's borderline impossible to play the spec, let alone perform well on it in the current meta. For this reason, we'll be moving Affliction down from A tier to B tier. The ranged tier list looks quite similar to last update, with only Affliction Warlocks shuffling down one tier. Beastmaster and Demonology Warlocks will still be keeping their top spots, despite both receiving some very minor nerfs. Hopefully now though, the bridge between them and other ranged specs is not as wide. Then for our A plus tier, we're still happy with last week's placement of Frost Mage, who after nerfs to Glacial Spike are still performing relatively well. Destruction still remains to be very strong in the right lobbies, and lays in wait ready to steal the crown the moment demonology gets nerfed. Marksmanship, however, has had some recent speculation about a potential bug that's been reducing the damage of aimed shot, but once fixed, will continue to be a good spec for all hunters looking to deviate from BM. Pretty insignificant changes for balanced druids, keeping them inside of our A tier. If only that star surge change affected PvP as well, then we could have seen them climb higher. Whereas poor Shadow Priest mains go yet another week of holding out for patch 10.1. Leaving Devastation and Fire Mage at the bottom of our range tier list for another week, just now joined by Affliction. Healers are getting the most changes this patch, and to start, we'll look at the Discipline changes. Discipline has had its mid-season reign as the most powerful healer until its damage nerfs, but it's set to be heading for the top spot once again, but for a different reason now. Holy Nova is now buffed by a whopping 30%. Nah, just kidding. The big change comes in the form of a 25% increase to the effectiveness of Power Word Shield, as well as mana reductions for all atonement applicators. The Power Word Shield change alone has made Disciplined Priest healing in PvP incredibly strong, and when paired alongside their defensive cooldown arsenal, make them one of the best defensive healers in solo shuffle right now. Because of this, we'll be moving Discipline up from A tier to S tier for this update. Restoration Shamans have been one of two healers dominating solo queue over the last few weeks, so Blizzard is combating this with a rather drastic 5% nerf to healing across the board. Overall, this is incredibly detrimental for Restoration Shaman mains, with one of the main complaints being that instant healing is no longer enough to keep players alive anymore. And as we all know as a healer, if you're forced to have to cast, chances are you're probably not going to perform all that well. For shamans in specific, this nerf leaves a lot less room for making use of the utility and disruption that was making them S tier to begin with, but given the right lobby, they can still dominate. We'll be dropping Restoration Shaman down from S tier to A plus tier. Preservation of Ochre's mains must feel dizzy, as every week they're either moving up or down on the tier list. This hotfix, we've got some pretty impactful buffs though, with an overall 3% healing increase across the board, coupled with a 15% increase to the healing from Living Flame. Overall, this will of course drastically improve Preservation's healing output, and help to gloss over one of the main complaints of Ochre's have, of which is just essentially running out of healing when your two empowered spells are on cooldown. The increase to Living Flame especially will aid in combating this, as not only will this make casting the ability feel much more beneficial, but will also make instant procs from the tier set a lot more impactful defensively. For now, with these changes, we'll be moving Preservation up from A tier to A plus tier. Mistweaver has continued to dominate Solo Shuffle in recent patches, so Blizzard has a couple of nerfs to help put them more in line with other healers. Receiving a 12.5% reduction on the damage of Rising Sun Kick, as well as a 15% reduction on any additional Blackout Kicks from Teachings of the Monastery. Overall, we're not too convinced this was enough, which is quite crazy to think about really as even after having a 12.5% decrease to one of their main heals, Fist Weavers are still doing more than enough healing to combat any level of incoming damage. This change, however, does limit the potential for abusing the Demonology Warlock's Wild Imps for additional healing. Whereas the nerf to mana from Spirit of the Crane is a weird one. Prior to this hotfix, Mist Weavers only took this talent in a select few matchups, as mana issues were never really a problem, meaning this changes the potential of causing Fist Weavers in very niche matchups to potentially have to be more wary of their mana. Overall, of course, Fist Weavers will feel slightly more in line after the nerfs, but will still well and truly be remaining inside of our S tier. 
The healer tier list is looking slightly different after the hotfixes, with a few specs shuffling around and the overall disparity between each tier being relatively balanced. Mistweaver will now be joined inside of our S tier by Disciplined Priest, and the now A plus tier Restoration Shamans will be joined by Preservation Evoker. For the A tier, Holy Priest receives some minor damage buffs, which will help promote a more offensive playstyle, but still severely lack in other departments. Holy Paladin got some very impactful healing buffs, seeing a 15% increase to both Word of Glory and Holy Shock. This should, in theory, help bridge the gaps between the downtime of Wings and limit some of the casting required by Holy Paladins, but as it stands, we've yet to see any major impact. So, for this update, we'll be keeping Holy Paladin where they are. Then, last but not least, Restoration Druids are still left feeling sour after the 10.0.7 nerfs, and a mana decrease on Cyclone isn't exactly the change that was needed. And if you are interested in learning how to navigate Solo Shuffle, no matter your class, we've got hundreds of arena commentaries available now at skillcap.com. Our website features gameplay breakdowns from pro players who take you through their lobbies and guide step by step through each matchup. When you combine this alongside our damage and healing courses, you have all the information you need to start climbing ladder. This even comes equipped with a rating gain guarantee. If you don't gain at least 400 points while actively using our guides, we refund you. Simple as that. So if you want to achieve your goals this season and improve your solo shuffle journey, visit Visit skillcap.com to get started. Sign up via the link in the description below. So there you have it guys, that concludes our update for the Solo Shuffle tier list after the 11th of April hot fixes. And as always, thank you for watching, good luck on your climb, and from everyone here at Skillcap, we hope you have a great rest of your day.